Okay, first off, there is a massive difference between fascism and communism. No, actually, it's not massive. You can't even class them together in the same group. The thought that you could put these things in the same category is a ploy manufactured by Western propagandists and championed by people like this dickhead. But this is part of a broader strategy. Jordan Peterson has even said himself, Oh, everyone hates the Nazis so much, but why not communists? They killed more people. He is more worried about destroying Marxism than acknowledging Nazism was truly evil. Enough time with this blurring of the lines, and today we have people who outright call communism and fascism the same thing. And you know what's funny about the idea that they are the same? Is that fascists would fucking hate that the most. Fascists like the Nazis, and Mussolini's national fascists fucking hated communists. Neo-Nazis fucking hate commies. They literally came into existence to battle communists. That's why even the idea of these things being the same is not only wrong, but it's offensive to communists and fascists. Well, not that anyone really cares about fascist feelings, but... Yeah. But before we go any further, I am going to define each one for you in detail, then we can go on to discuss why we're all so confused enough to associate them in the first place. <sighs> what? No. I shouldn't even have to do a video like this in the first place, like, come on! Fascism. What is it? Fascism was first a movement, not an ideology or a theory that started in Italy following World War I. Now many people like to attribute it to this ideal and that set of beliefs primarily, but like I said, it did not begin this way. Mussolini and the Black Shirts were literally anti-communist gangs who loved fighting and terrorizing communists and union members who were on strike and organizing in Italy. They were employed by capitalists to crush workers' struggles like strike breaking and spreading terror to help Italian businesses get back to work. So you have to understand that workers all over the world a hundred years ago were way more active and militant than we are used to today. Workers would literally strike on their own terms, shut down workplaces for days, weeks, months, and in some parts of Italy, completely took over their workplaces to run them for themselves. Due to this militant workers' activity, it was critical to have a group of private thugs you could call upon to fight back against workers. This is exactly how fascism started in both Italy and Germany, from fighting workers in the streets. Not to fight the USSR, but simply bashing working people trying to organize for better pay and a better life. From there, fascism developed into a political and militaristic system. The group becomes disciplined and regimented to rally to larger and larger events and becomes politically organized by forming parties to win popular support in democratic elections. As it steamrolls, getting political traction from more and more pissed off segments of the population, people angry about war and capitalism, it picks up ideas and objectives much larger than just being anti-communist street fighters. It takes on its stereotypical traits, nationalism, xenophobia, ethno-supremacy, a cult leader and a core group, the weaponization of gender roles, i.e. the promotion of hyper-masculinity and traditional domestic roles for women. What it does particularly well is that it creates the idea of a supreme race that its supporters are part of. It uses existing national mythology based on important historical figures from the nation to glorify the chosen people. You're either in the group or you're not. This is incredibly attractive and gets huge support from people that are sick of their country being destroyed by foreign influence. This doesn't mean foreigners, but foreign business and finance. Communism 
doesn't have a supreme race theory. It recognises only the working class as an international group of people and is inclusive of all people that are sympathetic to the workers' struggles. Now here's a real kicker that everyone uses against socialists like it's this amazing secret ace in the hole that no one has ever said before. But Nazis were national socialists. So ha, huh, that means they're the same thing. Now this is such an easy and surface level observation. I get it, people don't have much of an understanding of history, so let me explain. The Nazis were not stupid when it came to marketing. They knew that a huge and overwhelming majority of Germans supported the Social Democratic Party. This party represented the political organisation of socialists and communists, i.e. people who believed in the ideas of socialism. But because of the way the Social Democratic Party had been handling things politically, many people were unhappy and looking for an alternative. The Nazis cashed in on this discontent and made sure they added in the name socialist to their branding. Mussolini knew how to use this socialist appeal. He was an old socialist himself. Many people were around this time. This is not a conspiracy. We have a word for this situation in English. It's a coincidence. Get you. Cow, you. Coincidence? So let me spell it out. If there's any similarities between them based on this factor, it's because fascism grew into an ideology and stole ideas from communism to be more appealing to working people. That's an incredibly important distinction and massively explains doubts surrounding their overlap. Now it should be pointed out about fascism that it works perfectly well within the capitalist system. It does not change the economics of society. This is important. Communism literally exists to change the economic mode. All fascism really does is get rid of the democracy part out of capitalism and then nationalises some sectors of the economy to get things moving. Capitalists in Germany loved the Nazis because they pumped huge money into industry, killed the workers movement and freed up access to un ethical business practices that you just couldn't get away with in a democratic society. Uh oh, is this gonna be another crazy experiment that crosses a line man was not meant to cross? Mussolini literally talked about creating a corporatist state to marry capitalist agendas with the state's goals. Now, some of you are thinking, oh, that's the third option. That is not a third option. That's capitalism with democracy taken away and add in some hyper-nationalism and some ethnic cleansing for good measure. To repeat, fascism does not change the economic foundation of society. That is literally all that communism stands for, changing the capitalist mode of production. Communism. Communism is a society developed out of socialism. Socialism being the workers' control of the economy. Communism being the realisation of a classless society because all the productive property has been removed from being held in private ownership for private gain, i.e. profit. This classless society will lead to a vastly increased level of individual freedom compared to anything that we can comprehend today. But we cannot get to communism without going through a massive transition period. So just to make it abundantly clear, no society has ever been communistic. Some countries may have had communist parties in control, but that does not make communism. That is incredibly important to understand. I have done a whole video explaining this, so I will link it in the description for you to check that out if you're interested. But communism cannot be the same as fascism because they are completely different things socially, economically and politically. Why they are confused? They are confused, I think, for geopolitical reasons. 
the Soviet Union was, and communist China is a superpower, like Germany under the Nazis, and the US, another superpower, wants to make sure all the other superpowers are lumped together in the same basket as being evil, while they are held up as the saviours of freedom and democracy. And so, conservatives and right-wing commentators are more than happy to say stupid shit like they are the same thing because they are both not democratic free market societies. The thing that people also draw a correlation between is that the Nazis killed millions of people and millions of people died in the USSR and China, so this means they are the same thing. Here's the logic, alright? Millions of deaths caused by a society means they are exactly the same. So Genghis Khan's empire is said to have killed millions of people back 800 years ago and wiped out apparently 10% of the world's population, which would be like killing 700 million people today. So was he a fascist and a communist? The two world wars started by capitalist countries killed 125 million people combined. Were these capitalist countries fascists and communists too? The thing that Westerners don't understand, English speaking ones that is, is that the USSR literally took care of crushing the Nazis pretty much single handedly from the Eastern Front in Europe before the US decided to conveniently wade itself into the conflict at the end of the fighting and mop up the glory. What I'm trying to say is that the communists literally crushed Nazism and killed it off as being a global threat and a threat to the human race. You must be able to think for yourself and sort through the propaganda on this one. It is important for us as revolutionaries. Communism represents a truly revolutionary idea, changing of social and political institutions by removing the outlived capitalist system. Fascism continues capitalism through authoritarianism and worse. Communism is international. Fascism is nationalism on steroids. Communism started as a theory and developed through experiences. Fascism started with commie bashing and then added theory later. Communists fight for the interests of the entire working class globally. Fascists literally believe in ethno supremacy. If you still think they are the same thing, you are deliberately being ignorant. No, they're ignorant. That's ignorant. Now, I hope that was helpful. If you liked this video, please subscribe for more and share this with someone who you think needs to hear it. Remember, I am, you are, we are a mystery.